I was just doing a little playing around earlier and made this page for I have this like loose leaf art journal with these cardstock pages in it and made this page out of some cutouts from a National Geographic and Glimmer Mist backgrounds and it was just cool as can be and then I posted a picture on my Instagram and Facebook and someone said did you make a video and I thought oh no <laughs> I was just playing around <laughs> didn't really know what I was doing or where I was going and I said I should have made a video but I did not so anyway, I'm going to make one after the fact and show you just a little bit about how I did the background, which looks super cool. And um, then you can do something like this if you want to. Okay, so I'm using this cardstock. It's an old Tattered Angels cardstock. It's not available anymore. Um, it's not really even all that fabulous it's okay but it's a really lightweight um, stock kind of cream color and some of the pages I have have this kind of um, embossed image on it which shows through the glimmer mist which is cool but not necessary you can do what I'm going to show on literally any piece of cardstock so um, that's what I used, and I just used some different colors that I had here on hand. This I'm, I intended to put some kind of vintage images on it, so I used just kind of browns and golds. I don't really have a lot of colors here at the house, but you don't need a lot of colors. This one was just a little bit brighter colors. And whoops. And then this one is really cool. Look at all that pattern in there the different colors kind of earth tones and copper and this was mostly blue and green and a sort of a I don't know bronze I guess color of mica and this one was um, kind of pink and red mostly gold mica in those colors but I'm showing you this because you can see there's just a lot of pattern going on. This is not just get, you know, use your spray mist to get this perfect, even um, light spray of color. Oh, no, no, no. That's so 90s. Let's get past that. <laughs> this is a, uh, a more fun way to use your spray mists with mica powder in them, no matter which brand you use. Of course, I mostly have and use Tattered Angels Glimmer Mists. It's what I have access to and they are fabulous. Um, but use, you know, whatever you've got and I'll show you how to get those cool backgrounds. So I'm pretty sure I've shown this before but it's been a while and some things are worth revisiting so we're just, you know, revisiting. The three colors I'm going to use, surprise, surprise, it's a red, yellow, blue. Super simple. My red color is one of my favorites, Merlot Gold. It's kind of a wine color with some gold mica powder. Um, this is just regular gold glimmer mist. It's sort of a yellow base paint with gold glimmer in it, gold mica powder. And then this one is Dragonfly, which is a blue uh, base paint with a green mica powder in it. So these, um, I do recommend these three. I love them. Um, you know, if you just, if you want to use some Glimmer Mist, you've not used them before, you're overwhelmed with the selection, you don't know what to buy, buy these three, okay? That's my recommendation. If you need something to get started, just some basic colors, buy these three. Merlot Gold, Dragonfly, and Regular Gold. All right, easy enough. Now, I'm going to take my little piece of flimsy cardstock here and I'm going to put way too much paint on it because that's what I do, right? And it doesn't matter what I start with. I think I'll start with the Merlot Gold. And just a reminder, if you've had your um, Glimmer Mist or your spray, your mist paints for a while and you get them out to use them, chances are they're going to be clogged. The, <laughs> the nozzle is. That is just part of it. 
There's not a whole lot you can do to prevent it, but it's usually easy to fix. And I have done extensive studies on video about where the clog happens, why it happens, how to fix it, and let me just put that probably half hour video in a nutshell and say 99% of the time the clog happens right here where the mist comes out. It's not down in the tube. You don't have to carefully shake side to side. It has nothing to do with it in my experience. It happens right at the exit point and that's just because when you spray the little bits of mica tend to build up right there in that tea tiny pinhole of a nozzle. A lot of the times all you have to do is run this under hot water, spray it, and it will come back to life. If that doesn't work, I keep a little fine sewing needle near my sink, a pair of needle nose pliers, and when it's, you know, with the hot water running, I just kind of jab my sewing needle in that tea tiny hole. Don't put it facing you because sometimes when you jab it in, it immediately breaks free and stuff starts spewing out because it's kind of built up in there. <laughs> but just, you know, poke it in there. You don't have to jam it in far. And just poke that hole, spray, spray, hot water, it clears up. So super simple. Um, don't fret when you're glimmer mists or your spray mists get clogged because they will. It's just what they do. But you can bring them back to life really easy. So this, you do want to shake them good before you use them. And then just spray way too much paint on here like this. And then take another color. Wear gloves if you want to because it will get everywhere and make sure your area is protected because overspray covers probably about an eight foot radius. <laughs> well, maybe not that much, but it seems like it. <laughs> there, and then the third one. And see, I've just got way too much paint everywhere and that's what I want. And it's kind of sitting on top because I've oversaturated my paper. Then I'm gonna let it sort of run and drip. And then where I've sprayed over on my mat here, oh yeah, you do wanna use a mat. I just kinda touch it down. And that's what gives you the cool patterns of, of mica. See? And this will take some time to dry, like, you know, all day. <coughs> You can speed it up with your heat gun, or um, I put mine in the oven on an oven proof thing for about um, at 200 degrees. Really maybe 10 minutes is all it takes for them to dry. And if you really want to bring out this part right here, if you happen to have this paper, some of you do because I sold it once upon a time. You can wipe this off. You can also get this effect by stamping with clear um, ink and embossing, embossed with clear embossing powder on your page and do that very same thing. It's just to resist. Let's see this paper. I r barely rubbed it and it started peeling. So yeah, be careful with that. But look, super cool background. I'm gonna get a little darker up in here like that. some blue so it looks sort of purpley. Now I'm going to let this completely dry and then I'll show you what I did to get sort of an outer space effect. Now here is my dried background paper which turned out quite nice but I want to add just a few um, you know stars so I'm going to squeeze out a little acrylic craft paint the cheap kind load it up on a toothbrush and then just splatter it I have to stand up to do this okay now just splatter it on there There. 
it's a galaxy. <laughs> kind of, sort of. All right, so that's our finished background. So I have a little bit. Now I've got, I pulled some pictures out. These are the ones that I did out of um, the National Geographic, I think. Did I talk about these? I'm not sure that I did. These are not planets. These are the bottom of whiskey glasses that after the photographer, you know, had his scotch after work or something, I don't know. He um, left the glasses sitting out because, of course, he's a man. He's not going to rinse it and put it in the dishwasher. <laughs> And he noticed after it dried, the dried sediment in the bottom of the scotch glass made really cool patterns. So he took it into a studio, he photographed the sediment, and then applied filters and colors, and they ended up looking like planets. It's actually really very cool. This was in the July 2019 issue of National Geographic, and these space guys were in there too. So I cut all of those out because I thought they were cool. Cut out all the spacemen, and I had some extras. This one, I didn't read all of this article, so I don't know what the story is, but this is not a real spaceman. That's a doll in there. So I don't know if that was some NASA toy or something. I'm not really sure. But I also cut out some more of the um, whiskey glass planets. And I thought I would just kind of maybe arrange these around him like that. And then I just cut out a circle and use some little rubber stamps on a piece of scrap painting paper that says Ken goes to Mars. Because he looks like a Ken doll, right? <laughs> and that I think is a great layout right there. So I'm just going to glue all that down. I'm going to use perfect paper adhesive because it's what fell into my hand when I reached out. And okay, you're gluing on Glimmer Mist with a water-based glue. It's going to lift the paint a little bit, but it's not going to lift it enough to cause a big problem because most of the paint soaked into the paper. So I'm not going to worry about the smearing. I'm just going to glue that one there over and under. And I'm going to kind of do the whole page because this glue has a satin finish to it. And I want, I don't want it to, I want the whole page to have the same kind of finish. So I'll end up gluing all over it. Um, yeah, let's put that one. Probably right there. And this one's the only one I have to be careful with because you can see the glue picked up the uh, glimmer mist. So I'm going to do that and then kind of wipe off my brush so, just so that it doesn't get too uh, muddied with the colors that I picked up. Yeah, it tinted it a little bit, but that's okay. Really wish someone would make a permanent glimmer mist, you know, nice and thin like that, but permanent. I don't, I've used some of the acrylic based spray inks, which are permanent, but I don't like the acrylic base. I like the water base. 
which I guess if it's water-based, it's not really going to be permanent. Maybe an alcohol-based spray. Ooh, alcohol spray inks. Does anybody do that? Yeah, someone should jump all over that. I think that would be a cool idea. Okay. Now, I think I'm going to get a clean brush to put my little man on here. Well, let me... I don't want him to be too incredibly blue. It's raining outside, or I would have taken this out and put a spray sealer on it or a fixative so that the inks wouldn't bleed. But with the rain, it's not really possible. I don't spray that kind of stuff in the house. There we go. I just won't go over him. Hopefully he's glued down enough. There we go. Now, I'll let all that dry good. Some of these cut edges are bothering me because, you know, it came out of a magazine so you can see a little bit of white along the cut edges. So, I've just outlined Ken with a black drawing pen. This is just a... I don't know what this is. Faber-Castell pit pen. Any kind of permanent black drawing pen like this or the Stedler pens that I like. They'll work. And they don't have any problem writing over the glimmer mist. So he's just a little bit more defined. I might do that to the planets too. I don't know. Definitely do it to this one. I'm not even going to be careful about it because this is definitely just kind of a fun page. There we go. Now I could even go in with my white gel pen and make some more defined stars if I wanted to. Try not to smudge it, just put little dots. done. I love it. So this was just a quick demonstration on how to use your glimmer mists to get bold backgrounds with cool pattern instead of just, you know, gently misted ones. And I hope you enjoyed it. That is all. The end.